this muskrat nymph because it's very simple pattern. It only includes just a few materials, which I'll get into. It's considered a searching nymph. In other words, it doesn't really imitate any particular type of insect. But because it's gray, because it has some of the features of an emerging nymph, either caddis or mayfly, it's a good searching nymph. In other words, if the fish are interested, they might at least come and take a look at it. Maybe they, they bite at it. All right. You can fish it either wet, which means basically, you know, it's going to be in the surface film or below it, or you could weight it and fish it a little bit deeper and fish it as a nymph. So it's very versatile. Now, the focus is going to be on technique, not only tonight, but throughout the year. So you say, well, what am I going to learn tonight? Let's, let's say I don't want to ever use the, the muskrat nymph. That's not the point of these beginner sessions. It's technique. You're going to learn to dub the body of this fly or any other nymph or even every many wet flies. You're going to learn that dubbing technique. You're also going to learn how to put a sort of a beard or hackle on this fly which you could use that technique for wet flies um, and nymphs. And then you're gonna have a peacock sort of collar at the head. I'll show you how to put that. So it's three materials, three techniques. Some of you probably could just breeze right through this, but that's the purpose of the beginner's class is to get everybody skilled in tying, not make them a wonderful tire of the muskrat nymph. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to <coughs> do some drawings and show you the steps. And then I'm going to tie one and have you come and stand around. Then everybody, there should be two hooks and everything you need to tie two of these. Um, I have two up here that we can pass around. Sort of a model, I tied those this afternoon. And, um, and you can see what it looks like in the real thing. And, you know what you're going to mimic. Um, I'll be going around and, and maybe some of the others um, to give you guidance if you're having a little bit of trouble. And so at the end of the evening, you should have learned a couple things and have two flies to take home with you. Okay. All right. So obviously the first thing you're going to do is put the hook in the vise. I don't need to talk about that. I might you to start the thread just slightly behind the eye as usual. Wrap it back till you get to the very end and then bring it back up a little bit. So you're gonna have like a double wrap right about where the tip of the hook is. Then you're gonna put on some dubbing. And I use the same story that, that um, was told to me when I first started learning to tie. A good friend of mine was a very good fly tire. I said to him, Ron, how much dubbing do you put on your thread when you start a fly? He said about the same amount as you have nymph or whatever fuzz in your navel, <laughs> which means not very much. The acronym or whatever is that you can always add dubbing, but you can't take it off once you get it on to the thread. So we'll, we'll work on our dubbing technique to make a noodle it's going to be probably about an inch long to start. And then you'll start to wrap that. And so that dubbing is going to come up and it's going to be sort of like an extended football. And that's pretty much the shape that you want for most nymphs. You're going to stop about a half inch, maybe in front of the eye. And now your bobbin is going to be here. And you're going to take one hackle feather, and I'm going to have you, I say, here's the hackle feather. I want you to clip out that piece, and so you're going to be left with something that looks like this. And then you're going to strip off some of these. And you'll be left with, I don't know why you see the thing like this. Mm -hmm. All right. You'll lay that on the top of the hook. 
some to what like this. So picturing this from looking down on the, at the top, and you have this dubbing here. This material is going to straddle the hook, this part, with the stem forward. Your thread at that point is going to be right about here. And you'll secure that and wrap it, make like one wrap, and then pull on this, and it will pull these hackle fibers forward. And then you'll take your fingers and push down so that the hackle is now straddling the hook. And then you'll begin to wrap back over it. So then you'll be at the point where I'll draw it back this way. Now, this hackle is, you want it to be just about that long, not quite to the tip of the hook. Your thread will be at this point, at that, at that time. You then put in, tie on one or two pieces of peacock from the tip end, secured by wrapping your thread forward. and then wrap that peacock there and finish off the plot. All right? So those are the steps. Very simple. Okay, uh, what I've done already is I've wrapped my thread back to the bend of the hook and then I've brought it up a little bit. Right. So now I'm gonna put some dubbing on. And everybody has their own technique for applying dubbing, but I will do it the way, I'll show you the way I do it. All right, being right-handed, I hold the, the dubbing in my left hand. Now I moisten my fingertips a little bit. That's about all. And then I pull off just a little bit. You can hardly see that. And then when I apply it to the to the thread, I just go one direction. See that was a, just that motion. And I take a little bit more and I put it right there. And I'm pressing down, so as I'm rolling my fingers, I'm pressing. You can't go on, off, on, off, because you're getting nowhere. And then a small amount at the very end. So you can already see the football, sort of. In other words, it's thin, thick, thin. Now, the dubbing will always slide up the thread for you. All you've done is stuck it on there. It hasn't adhered in any way. And that's about all the, the dubbing that you need. You have enough in your pack to probably do six flies. But Okay, so now I'm gonna wind back to the bend. And then begin to come forward. Now, it's not football shaped yet. <laughs> and I'm not too proud of that, but hopefully you can mm -hmm. see that I'm making some progress. <coughs> now I've stopped about that that far short. So there's, I don't know, that's maybe a quarter of an inch. Right. Next thing I do is I take, you should ha have one or more of these and I have plenty. All right, I'm going to cut the tip out of this. So I have sort of a V shape. I don't need all of that, so I'm gonna take some of this off down here. Leaving a little bit of a stem. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I lay this on top, right about there. I want to advance my thread a little bit. Now I'm pushing down and I'm holding that on both sides. So it's like putting a saddle on a horse. 
one or two light wraps and then pull this forward until I get it about that long. See what I've done? I pulled on the stem. And now I push down. So now this tackle that I put on is on both sides. Okay. Thank you. And I can clip off this a bit on the head there. And now I take, let's say, two pieces of this and I line the tips up. It doesn't have to be lined up perfectly. I'm going to bring my thread up to the front of the hook and I just tie those in. I wrap this back right about to where the hackle stop. I clip off this extra. Now, the tire that I looked at on YouTube spins his um, bobbin counterclockwise. To sort of open up the thread and then wrap forward then you can wrap your tackle around or your peacock around to form the head or the collar and then one wrap behind one or two wraps behind the peacock One, two, and three in the front. Now, <clears throat> I will both demonstrate the half hitch tool. <laughs> or the whip finisher. For those of you who like to use the whip finisher. And we can give you, you know, one on one instructions for this. I make a, a triangle. Mm -hmm. Lay it up there. One, two, three, four. And you're done. So, there you go. Real fast question. What size hook? Is that like a 10? Um, this, I think I chose was a 10. But, um, you, you probably have 10s or 12s. At the, now, if I were tying this for my own fishing, I would tie a 14.